welcome all of you to the post screening discussion of a really dreamy and dramatic and yet realistic uh, documentary feature, uh, Mayor. We have the honor and pleasure to host you in conversation with David Ossett, who is the director, the producer, the cinematographer. Um, and I'm guessing had a lot to do with the music, perhaps the uh, musical master man um, of Mayor. I hope you've all had a chance to see it. Uh, let me introduce you first to David and then we can get right to it. Uh, so David is um, an Emmy Award winning director, editor and composer. David is one of the directors of the feature documentary, Thank You for Playing, which I also recommend you'll want to see that next if you haven't already. Um, it premiered at the 2015 Tribeca Film Festival. It was broadcast on POV in 2016 and was nominated for three Emmy Awards, winning for Outstanding Arts and Culture Documentary. He also edited and produced Off Frame, which premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival and Berlinale in 2016. His first film, Building Battle, premiered at True False in 2012 David is an alumnus of Berlinale Talents and the Sundance Nonfiction Directors Lab. So welcome, David. Um, I'm so happy that you brought me, at least virtually, to Ramallah. Um, I actually emailed you, I know this morning we've never met, and I suggested that you somehow manage to beam us <laughs> into that Café de la Paz, which those of you who've seen the film remember, it's kind of the opening shot, and right away you know that there's going to be a complicated and yet um, insightful movie ahead. Um, I think one of the reasons the movie resonated so strongly for me, I've spent a lot of time in Ramallah, first as a reporter with the Washington Post, observing the region, um, most recently as a senior uh, policy advisor on the Israeli-Palestinian negotiating team at the State Department, trying to get in there and make a difference. Um, and also writing a book that was set on the road between Jerusalem and Ramallah halfway um, the book is called uh, Revenge. It's a nonfiction book. So I've spent a lot of time kind of in and around Ramallah and the sense I think that we're all feeling in our own lives, wherever you're watching this from, wherever you are in the world, is limits, dreams and limits. We're, we're all a little claustrophobic and we're all yearning, we're aspiring for a different reality. Um, you know, in, in uh, October of uh, 2020. So, I guess I wanted to ask you, I know you made this film in 2017, but I wanted to start off by asking you what your sort of goal was and what's different here. That people describe the film as, I'm looking at some of the reviews, a bureaucratic black comedy, um, unnerving suspense. It both amuses and devastates in equal measure. So there's tension and there's conflict, which you always see in films about, about the West Bank, particularly about Palestine, Israel. Um, but the mayor, Mayor Hadid, um, said himself at one particularly depressing moment in, in the movie, um, every year it's the same chaos, the same story. You're almost taken back to Ecclesiastes. There's nothing new under the sun. So your movie obviously breaks new ground. Tell me what is new here? What are we seeing? What are we feeling? It might just be an ambiance thing or it might be a message. For, for me, when I set out to make the film, I, I think, and when I set out to make any film, I'm more spurred by questions than by the pursuit of answers. And when I first started conceiving of the idea of, of Mayer, it was because I had spent some time in Ramallah um, uh, editing this film off frame that you mentioned. And it had, I'd been there before many times, but it had been a while since I'd been back. And I was taken aback by how much the city had changed in recent years, in that there were hipster bars and nightclubs and free unlimited public Wi Fi and a Jaguar dealership. And even for me, as someone who had spent a lot of time in the Middle East, I still have to. Um, reckon with the way as a, as a Westerner and particularly as a North American, um, I'm, I'm taught and was taught a very one-dimensional image of what Palestine is. 
and Tell me what that is, if you don't mind, just so that we understand. What what did you come into it? What was the one dimension? I honestly think that the way I came into it is the way many people watching this Q&A would come into it, which is uh, not necessarily if you haven't been, if you haven't spent time there, if you haven't studied the region, if you haven't worked there, you think about Palestine, you think about desert, you think about camels, you think about terrorism, you think about all these sort of one dimensional takes that uh, is the, the limit to most of our knowledge. Um, because this is not a part of the, of the world that Americans are really uh, expected to have much nuance about unless they have some sort of a link to the region or some sort of tie to the region in some way. And even if they do, perhaps even more so, um, a one dimensional link to Palestine in particular, in terms of the idea of what it might be or what it might look like. And so so spending time there, I, I, even, I even was reckoning with my own uh, sense of how surprised I was and how surprised I was that I was surprised. And I, I could kind of put that away for, for a little while. But then Mahana, the director of, of Off Frame, uh, came to New York and, and we screened the film and he stayed with, with me in, in my apartment in, in New York. And one night I just remember asking him, like out of curiosity, what's, what's the mayor of Ramallah like as a, as a person? And he was telling me, oh, you know, he's, 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 he's Christian. Um, he's very charismatic, he's very funny. He vapes a lot. He's, uh, he's kind of just always out and about and you see him around all the time. And I think my, my mind was flooded with questions that I was very curious to ask, m mostly being like, how do you run a city when you don't have a country? How do you run a city underneath an occupation? What, is the, what does that look like? And I imagined it would be absurd and I imagined it would be terrifying and I imagined it would be frustrating. And I imagined that the civic pride that I saw on display would be part and parcel to the work that he does. So I wanted to see what a film like that would be. And that was, that was the goal for me, was trying to add imagery to the idea of what Palestine could look like for people who aren't accustomed to looking at it. And I love the way you repeated the verb, <laughs> imagine. I imagine this, I imagine this, I imagine. Was there anything that you discovered that you hadn't imagined or was it different at all? And in which, what was different than, than what you imagined? I mean, uh, I, 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 could, I, I couldn't even place a finger on how many things I, I learned um, while I was filming. I, I mean, I, I went in with these questions of trying to understand what his work was like. I, I think, to me, really discovering how important civic pride was uh -huh. for, for, for Musa. I, I think the film ended up really becoming um, a, a, his, his vision for what he wants Ramallah to be. His, his dream of what he wants Ramallah to be. And as you mentioned with the, you know, the shot of Café de la Paix at the beginning of the film, and that's sort of bookended as, as at the end of the film where there's this, this moment of, of violence outside of City Hall, I have a feeling that an audience, at least I hope that an audience can start to even sense the geography of Ramallah and over the course of the film, that you know the fountain's there and the, and the Café de la Paix is there and City Hall's behind here. And you start to understand that even if you haven't been and, for me to convey this idea of this was his dream area of what he wants Ramallah to be, um, what he hopes it can feel like. And I think for anyone who's been to Ramallah, um, or even if you haven't been to Ramallah, maybe you've been to Tel Aviv or something, I think that both cities have something in common, which is that they can both feel like a bubble. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they can both feel as though if you if you squint, you can kind of pretend there's, there's no um, strife happening here. And that's not to say it's not there, uh, and of course, it's even in Ramallah, there are refugee camps in the environs of Ramallah. There's, you know, walls not too far away, checkpoints not too far away, um, incursions, as you see. But there are, Ramallah is unique in the West Bank in that you can really, um, the, the way in which the economy functions there, the way in which the history and, the, and the, it being the seat of the PA, uh, it, it, there's ways in which you can have this feeling of a normal life. And the piercing of that, I thought, was really um, powerful to, to, to show in the film. And, and that was, I think, what I was imagining happening at a certain point when I first started filming. And, and right from the very beginning, from the poster, I think, um, where you have, it's not the face of the mayor, although the movie, although you call it mayor, it's, it's you're pretty much on his shoulder or, you know, he's the camera and you're looking through him into that beautiful landscape. Actually, it's like a skyscape. That's what struck me also. There's so many beautiful shots of, of the skies over Ramal, and that also gives it a kind of transcendent feeling. And I know that um, you shot 
I think you mentioned um, previously you shot 16 shots of the church bells and the Moazine call to prayer, right? Because you wanted to get that. And, and it's that kind of sense of God or spirituality, whatever you want to call it, you know, man, man and woman's hope for, for a better tomorrow kind of wafting through that atmosphere. Um, yeah, I, one of my favorite shots in the film, I, it, it, one of my favorite moments in the film is when Musa is in Oxford, England, looking at the painting of Jerusalem by Edward Lear. And at, for, for me, that that moment, it's, uh, I, I was just texting with a couple people who had just watched the film who, who had very different interpretations of that moment, which was which was wonderful. Um, for, for me, that that's the closest he can get is a, is a, is a painting in a museum in the the original occupiers then uh essentially and i and i found that image very compelling um especially as he goes on this world tour trying to ra rally attention for the cause of palestine palestinians and um and being met with you know very very varied results uh but but for me the 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 painting of this of, of jerusalem and this sort of even even that has this representation of it uh of the city of the area of these you know this this orientalist excitement over the the majesty and the and the and the raw beauty and, and the nature and everything and i and i and i was really compelled by the this the imagining what what someone like him what what anyone might be thinking i did not grow up in an occupied country you know i, I grew up in the united states uh, I, I grew up in a, a country that has essentially taken lands from other people. Um, so I am part of a power structure growing up in the West that uh, is very difficult to, to, for, for me to, to, to pull back from, I think as a Westerner, but it's, it's, I think it's been interesting, especially with, with quarantine and the pandemic, how many people have, have been relating to this film in a way that I could, of course, never could have imagined. And you say, you know, it's made since 2017 and we started filming in 2017, but, you know, we finished the film in, in 2019. The film was premiering at the beginning of 2020 um, at the at True False Film Festival, which was the last normally scheduled film festival to proceed as, as planned in the world. And I think ever since then, I think this idea about, you know, you can't go to restaurants, you can't travel as an American, you can't do these things. I mean, these are limitations that have been on Palestinians for, for, for seven decades. Uh, and and I, I think that some of that feeling is is maybe a little more tangible now to certain Western audiences. It's certainly uh, resonating, I, I, I think so, absolutely. And you mentioned that painting. I think it's also so powerful because what you see throughout um, reviews and articles about this film, they, they say it's, the, I'm just looking over here, it says the best new film about Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's not, I didn't really find it necessarily political at all. Um, but there is sort of reality on the ground and then the idea. And that painting, as you talk about when Musa's looking at the painting, there's, there's actual Jerusalem and then there's the artist's version of Jerusalem and the dream, the intangible kind of Jerusalem or Ramallah, um, you know, going all the way back to the Bible. And I found when I was working in the State Department as a negotiator, sometimes it was easier to bring the two parties together on the tangibles whether it was borders actually were sometimes easier to talk about than the idea of mutual recognition, right? Or the concept of recognize whatever it might be on either side. Sometimes those intangibles are actually the most important thing of all. And I think you nailed it with that scene um, when Musa is meeting with, I believe a German delegation and they're kind of pushing him in one direction. And he finally says, look, it's a matter of dignity. And, and you also put it so well just a few minutes ago when you said civic pride. Um, dignity is far more important than we as Westerners can appreciate. Um, and I found that to be very, very kind of foundational um, in any kind of conversation with Palestinians um, and between Palestinians and Israelis. And part of it, I think, has to do with power and the history of the people. Um, you don't really focus too much on the Israelis, but what I saw when talking to Israelis is what they needed more than anything, I call it the two R's. The Israelis needed reassurance and the Palestinians, and rightfully from their point of view, and the Palestinians needed respect, again, rightfully from their point of view, because the Jewish people have been disempowered for, you know, 
however many generations, and they're probably stronger than they believe. Than they, you know, you know, they look strong to the world, but they feel weak. So they need respect. Palestinians have been living in that country, you know, going back generations on their land with tremendous amount of sense of power and autonomy, and they have been disempowered. And therefore, the thing that they really need, they also have a power imbalance. They're a lot less powerful than they're used to being, so they need the, they need your respect. So I appreciate that in a film, you're able to capture both the, the, the beautiful visuals, um, but also the intangibles, which is what make the conflict, um, at least in my experience so far, unsolvable. And, and I wanted to go to another film that you made, which was Thank You for Playing, which again, I want to encourage everybody to see it, um, which is incredibly intimate, like this film, but you're capturing the beauty and love and possibility of something, and I'm going to start choking up. Um, I won't get, you know, I don't want to give away too much, but it's an unwinnable fight. And I was wondering about that unwinnable word, if that's something you're drawn to. Do you feel like ultimately Mayor is a movie that says, guys, you can do it. It can all work. There can be a happy ending. Or is this a kind of moody, um, kind of uplifting, but ultimately very sad um, film? I wasn't sure. I, that's a lovely question. Um, it's, it's a lovely question and one that we, I think I could spend uh, far too long addressing. Okay. Um, but I think uh, I will say that one, I was thinking a lot of um, when I was making Mayor, I was thinking a lot of um, of about like uh, like bicycle thieves and like like Italian neorealist films that managed for me to buy buy films and say so much about the state of society, but through the lens of uh, a family, a man, a, a, a father a person who's going through an experience and who goes through an experience and the film has this micro journey, but when the, when the credits roll and the lights come up, you realize that the film is about the macro in a certain way. And I, I, the, I, for anyone who's seen Bicycle Thieves, I, I was thinking a lot about the final shot in that film with the final shot of Mayor, which is you've held, you know, not to, spoiler alert but the film's like 70 years old so i don't feel bad spoiling it but 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 you you have this uh father and son who you're following along for all this time and uh and then essentially the the film ends in in some tragedy uh and then they, they drift into a crowd essentially by the end of the film the 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 film empties out into this this space that is reflexive of all of post-war italy in this very tense and and tragic and 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 unfulfilled moment for, for people economically, socially, uh, financially, whatever. And I was thinking a lot about that with, with the ending of, of Mayor when we're, we're seeing this, this majestic fountain, but the last shot we see is of, you know, behind Musa's head. And the three shots before that are three generations. Uh, it's, it's young boys throwing rocks into the fountain in Ramallah, um, which was another sort of symbolic element. And then the, the second shot is one generation older uh, young men uh, wearing the Nutella shirts, which I think represented the sort of capitalist dream that Ramallah mm -hmm. holds on to. Uh, and then it's Musa uh, behind the fountain watching and, and waiting for this fountain to, you know, to kick off. And then we're in the fountain and we're in a crowd and this is the civic pride and this is what people wanted and this is what Musa wanted and this is what his dream was. And of course, I think the fountain by that point in the film represents much more than the civic activities represent in the first 10 minutes, which is almost somewhat buffoonish at times and almost okay. silly, uh, the sort of like, oh, why, why do they want this Christmas tree parkour so much? Uh, but, but then by the end of the film, I think it holds so much more meaning because you do, I think, link civic pride to dignity and, and, and these civic celebrations to dignity. And I think the fountain does represent dignity by that point in the film. But the way I, the, I wanted to really just leave people, I, I do not believe the film has a happy ending, frankly. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I think the film's ending is as tragic as reality, which is uh, that this is, this is all we can do. Um, th this is all Mayor Musa can do. And it's beautiful. And what, he sh can do and what I think that other people can do is try to create circumstances out of horrendous circumstances to create dignity for themselves when no one else is able to be invested in helping them attain dignity on their own and the world has passed by 
um, uh, people like Musa uh, over the last several decades trying to help him um, and, and trying to manifest dignity within this part of the world. And I wanted to leave people with how that might feel. I feel like, the, as you mentioned, the camera's following Musa so much in the film. And that's in part because I did want people to feel as though this was Musa's view of Ramallah. So I wanted the camera to leave him at the end of the film. And I want you to zoom out and I want you to think, okay, well, I've been with Musa this whole time and now I'm understanding potentially what he wants and how he's trying to get what he wants. But now I'm just left with, this is the state of the of the of the circumstances and it's only visible at, at home but you know I, th th there's even little things that I tried to do in that last shot where the you know the aspect ratio of the film is you know widescreen throughout the entire film but at the end of the film as the fountain's playing uh, if anyone's noticing the 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 borders stretch uh, up so that it becomes a, a full picture and and that's it's a really minor thing but I was doing that in the edit thinking like you know, I'm creating cinema in the first, you know, 89, 88 minutes of the of the film. And this is the sort of representative view that's certainly my point of view, but also a little bit Musa's point of view of Ramallah and what it looks like. But and and this this quest to make a new kind of image, which is coming from the music and coming from the cinematography and the humor and all these things. But then at the end, I think that it stretches out into just it's just a base. It's just a shot. It's just, this is just what this is just a moment of people outside of the fountain in Ramallah. And it's not Musa's story anymore. It's just, this is just a piece of reality. And I think that we in the West are so codified into, especially with documentary filmmaking, um, trying to have a takeaway, like a, a punchy sort of, here, here's, our, here's the story. It's a, it's a happy story, it's a sad story. And I think my favorite films tend to be much more complicated than that. And they give me a, a, an emotion that I can't quite explain. And I think that emotion typically is what compels me to either have more interest in a story to, or to have more empathy for the people in the story. And that was the reason I made the film. I wanted people to have a different, uh, a different angle the next time they thought about what Israel-Palestine is or the next time they tried to imagine or the next time they got into a debate with family at Christmas or something and and thinking about like what what else can can I update my image of what this place is to be a little more complicated and as a result have maybe a little more nuanced of a feeling about it and a friend of mine I'm glad that we're talking about that final scene a friend of mine told me she watched that 14 times <laughs> <laughs> she just went back she just wanted to see the fountain again she wanted to hear the music and I think that in a way, that's a, an interesting, I know we don't want a catchy message, but all we have is now. Like the water, the music, and, and for them, all they have, and, and again, the Israelis very much live in the moment as well. The people in that region, tomorrow, you know, Allah Allah only knows. It's, it's we have, all we have is now. Um, and, that's, and, and then it vanishes so beautifully. And one other thing that I found so powerful in the end that you didn't mention, but is the screen goes dark, but you still hear the voices. Like the movie's over guys, it's time to, you know, click off or get a snack, but we can still hear kids laughing and people moving around and everybody, I, I think that was a beautiful touch. Um, I know we're kind of winding down a little bit, running out of time. I wanna make sure to ask you, cause I'm so curious. Um, you mentioned that you're from the United States. I know you're from, grew up in New York, that's Westchester, um, but you were drawn to the Middle East, at least academically, starting in college at Michigan, um, and then studied in Cairo, I believe, studied or worked in Cairo. So tell me just, David, like what, you know, because not everybody gets that bug, but you have it and good for you. Um, what is it? Was it a family member? Was this something you read, you saw, you um, and then also tell me while we're doing the backstory here about you, any interesting, funny, insightful um, challenges you had filming? You know, I don't, and I don't know if there was anything, but like, it's never easy reporting in the, you know, in that sure. if you have well, any kind of, so, so kind of who you are and some of the challenges you had actually on the ground over there. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, 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 I to start with the first question, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, I, my first week of high school was 9-11. And I uh, grew up in a relatively conservative neighborhood. Um, and I think that in the weeks following 9-11, it was also uh, concurrent with the second intifada. Uh, 
the images coming back to me as a teenager uh, did not make sense compared with the way that my peers were responding to these images. Uh, there was a lot of um, really confusing discriminatory conversation that was dismissing entire groups of people. And what I later started to understand was that as soon as the as soon as these Americans became aware, let's call it let's call a spade a spade, became aware of Arabs, became aware of the Middle East. Um, it was around the same time that images of Palestinians as terrorists were also being beamed towards them. And the two became linked in this remarkable way that um, I think was really hard for an entire generation, my generation to undo. And I, so I was, I, I was really, I felt a lot of discord with, um, with what I was feeling and seeing um, post 9-11. And then I, I was lucky enough to go on this like high school trip to Turkey um, in 2004 at the height of Abu Ghraib. And that was, there was embassy bombings and it, in, in, in Istanbul and it was a fraught time, but I stayed with this host family and had was spending time in, in the world of Islam and didn't know anything about it. Again, I was from like a really conservative, like working class area and just didn't have this in my life and was stunned when I would come home and hear the vitriol that was not in accord with how anyone felt about us and felt about me uh, and felt about Americans. And I think it became a lifelong interest for me in terms of understanding um, our role as Westerners in othering um, and our role as Westerners in codifying different parts of the world as being so one dimensional that they're not even worth our engagement, not worth our time, not worth our empathy. And I think that uh, to, it goes back a bit to what drew me to, to Ramallah and Musa in the first place, which was that it was, I, I had a sense that, that if I were to share images, um, and I, I think this might be true for you or anyone I know, Western, who's been to Ramallah, they come back, they tell Americans what Ramallah is like, and they're all, stu they're all stunned. They're all shocked. They're all blown away. They're all confused. They're all mystified, and they all want to learn more. And one of my favorite reviews of, of, of Mayer was by a, a, a journalist in Variety. It was like, it made me want to go there. I was like, great, that's, that's, that's wonderful. Um, I, I, I wanted, to, I wanted to, to bring that sense of wonderment that I think has filled me my whole life in terms of how broad global experiences can be um, if, if, you're, if you're not turned off to them. And especially when it comes to parts of the world that I think have been unfairly represented by us, by us in the West. We're, we're, I, mean, we're, I mean, we're just, we're, main, we're the main culprits for, for this. And I wanted to see if I could open up that definition a little bit for people. Uh, so that, that's, that's a, at least a, a, a 101 primer on, on huh. me. <laughs> but uh, in terms of your second question of, of like moments during production, um, behind the scene moments or even post-production like how is Musa doing we all care about him now is that I mean he's doing he's doing okay um it's a it's a difficult situation in in Ramallah in the West Bank um it, there there's been several outbreaks now of the of COVID um traveling is harder than it's ever been um you know Musa was heading to the airport to come to our world premiere um uh, when the situation got on too unwieldy and he had to turn back uh, so it's been a shame to not be able to show uh, the film with him and an audience present. Uh, but but he, I did show him the film, a rough cut of the film, uh, and he loved it. And I showed his family and they loved it. Uh, he, he's doing okay. It's it's very difficult to travel right now, um, except for, you know, extenuating circumstances. It's really become uh, as as even more so with the sort of outdoor prison, uh, the West Bank. Um, but they're holding strong and they're all healthy, uh, him and his family. And I'm very excited to be able to show the film at some point to, to him. I understand and, that there was yeah. a standing ovation, 1,700 people in the auditorium for the first, when you first, uh, I guess he was supposed to come to the premiere, right? And so he didn't, he wasn't there for that moment, but I'm sure that moment will, will come in the future. So yeah, that's fantastic. And, and in terms of obstacles either, I was thinking the Palestinian Authority is in Ramallah. Like, was there any issue of you focusing on 
the mayor rather than them? Or was there any problem getting, I don't know where you were staying in Jerusalem or not, but traveling back and forth over through checkpoints from these. I, I stayed in, I stayed in Ramallah. So I had an, I had an apartment in Ramallah and um, the, the main issue w was, was with flying in and out of Ben Gurion airport in Tel Aviv. And, um, having a lot of skepticism as to why I was making so many repeat visits and right. um, stamps in my passport from Muslim countries uh, and and lots of full security checks and encrypted drives and uh, lots of lots of that lots of tension going back and forth between the checkpoints and wondering if this would be the last time I'd be able to enter or leave the country because as I was traveling they were beginning to start just banning people from entry um, so so that was the only concern I had, but filming in Ramallah, I, 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 it was, it was more welcoming than filming in the streets of New York, frankly, you know, like, like there, no one ever, any poem at any moment gave me a hassle with the camera was curious as to what I was doing. No one had any problem with me being there, which was, which was a relief for sure. And I understand that at least in audiences, you've had some Israelis be very receptive and come up to you and say, I was worried that this might be political, but in fact, it was just universal and, and very humanizing. Um, have you had any other interesting response or, or any Israeli film festivals been in touch with you? Or? You know, it's funny. It's funny when people say that I thought it would be political, but it was instead very personal because I think about what political means these days and, and what, um, I mean, Moose's job, I mean, I feel like he's the quintessential politician, right? But he's, yeah. he's a politician who's not engaging on this, uh, he, he, he is engaging on a global scale, but but it's like it's about the he he's like the first basis of representative government. Like he, he is elected, he serves two terms, and his job is to please his constituents. And I mean that that is the sort of uh, core of politics that I think uh, is very easy to forget about because it's supplanted by the um, animal house that we call politics in the United States uh, and, and across the Western world at the moment. And um, it's like, I think, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, I think the film is, I, I guess the film is, is, yeah, not as political as, as, as other films that would be engaging with, you know, like what are the machinations of like how this government reacts to that government. But I wish politics was more like this. Uh, I, I, I feel like this, um, I feel like politics would be a lot more easy for young people to engage with as well if it had more to do with, um, the the way we feel we're being represented um, and or the way that we feel as though politicians are essentially beholden to us. And I think that that's changed a lot, which which has been interesting. I feel like Musa would always say something to me and in meetings, <clears throat> which I always appreciated, which he was like, the office is not mine. He'd say it in Arabic, but he would say like, the office is not mine. Like I just, I, I borrowed it. I'm here for four years. I'm here for four years. And and then I'm gone and it's someone else's. And when I was thinking about the name of the film, I felt like Mayor was almost an appropriate name given that it could, it could have been someone else. It, it didn't have to be about Mayor Musa. It just, he happened to be the mayor. This happened to be him. And, and I, sorry, I was just thinking about that as you were saying this, this comment about, you know, I hoped I was afraid the film would be political. Um, and, and I was surprised to see that it wasn't. I, and I, it's, I think about that a lot. Well, and sadly, I think that here, but there as well, that's how people, they, they see, oh, there's a movie about Israel, Palestine. They immediately say, well, whose side are you on? Right. Uh, and that an Israeli, at least one woman, you know, approached you afterward and said that I was happy to see that it was larger than that. It's funny, it's bigger and it's smaller because when you're talking about politics, it's sort of, for Musa, it's very grounded. It's very practical. It, it's doorknobs and sewage and that, um, manages actually somehow to transcend that middle layer of just blather, right, which is politics as we know it in Washington, where I'm, I'm sitting today. Um, but I, I also thought of, as you were talking, the movie Field of Dreams, you know, the baseball, where, well, yes, if you build it, they will come. And it's almost as if um, Mayor Musa is building the, his field of dreams and hoping that somehow you know, the, the, the angels will work, you know, if you're a New Testament person or, or, or whatever you believe in, um, uh, that it'll all work out, inshallah, you know. So um, I just really want to thank you um, for bringing this to us, to the world at such an important time. I, the timing is perfect, um, but it's also 
again, I'm gulping. I was so moved by it. Um, it's forever. You're, you're, this is going to last forever. And that's a very um, wonderful thing to feel like you've accomplished. So thank you all for watching. Um, follow David, do whatever you, whatever he makes it. I have a feeling you'll want to see more um, and uh, enjoy the rest of the festival. Oh, I will say last thing I'll say is um, uh, the website of the film is mayorfilm.com and we'll have some news regarding uh, theatrical releases to be happening towards the end of the year. So if you're interested in sharing the film with people who are outside of the DC area, then follow over there and stay tuned. Wonderful. And we haven't met yet, but I did bring a cup of mint tea. Oh, there and, you go. <laughs> uh, see you in Ramallah. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Bye guys. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank you.